Today, I'm really excited to have my friend Denise Woodard, the founder, CEO, entrepreneur behind Partake Foods. Her story is remarkable and it has a lot of levels to it and a lot of chapters. And I think all too often with entrepreneurs in the free home space and in the allergen free space, people think, oh, it's mom in her kitchen and she started baking these cookies and boom, there she is on fourth. And we're here to tell the real story behind the story of Partake Foods. So Denise, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Robin. Super excited to, to be here and to share our story. Well, I was just thrilled when I learned about you for so many reasons. Um, food security is a national issue, it's a global issue. And when you're talking about the free from space, it becomes a totally different issue. And unfortunately, accessibility is not always there for our families. And on top of that, the cost of caring for a child that has food allergies is upward of $4,000 extra on top of that family budget. So there's already a lot of complexity economically with this. And then you step into this. You step into this space with your own children. And I would love if you would just share with our viewers a little bit about your story. Sure thing. So I spent most of my career in CPG um, at Coca-Cola. So initially I was there about eight years and initially started on the big trademark brands like Coke, Diet Coke, and Sprite, and then got pregnant with my daughter Vivian and really wanted to move over to our more health conscious brand. So I spent some time in their venturing and emerging brands group where I led sales for brands like Honest Tea and Zico Coconut Water and really thoroughly enjoyed it. Loved the company culture, really believed in the brands that we were building and had no intention of leaving. And then my daughter came along and was born and she's five now, but right around her first birthday, she uh, shook things up from day one. And we learned that she has multiple food allergies um, through a pretty scary incident. And it turns out she's allergic to corn, eggs, most tree nuts and bananas. And so Partake, the idea for Partake was born in my kitchen in the summer of 2016. Our nanny, Martha, who actually has some equity in the company now because she uh, is the person really behind this. She said, you know, your daughter is on this really boring diet. You don't ever give her anything fun. So many of her most fond childhood memories are going to revolve around food. Do you want it to just be quinoa and fish every day? And I was like, well, no. And I started to share my woes about what I what existed in the space. And I didn't feel satisfied from a taste perspective or a nutritional perspective or from a brand perspective and decided to do something about it. And that's how the idea for Partake was born. So I think you've hit on a lot of important things because I think the first thing, you know, with a diagnosis like this is safety. So get rid of anything that could cause harm. And we're not exactly thinking about flavor. And in a lot of cases, we're not always thinking about nutrition. It's just, can't I find something that's going to put the calories into my child, satiate them and keep them safe. So it's almost like you go through these different levels. And then, you know, to step into that and say, okay, then what's the nutritional component that's here? And then, and then flavor. And I think, you know, the food allergy epidemic has come on so quickly. It's two kids in every classroom. We saw a 265% increase in hospitalizations related to food allergic reactions over a 10-year period. It came on so quickly. And the market was sort of slow to catch up. And we saw a parallel thing happen with gluten-free, where some of the first gluten-free products that emerged on the market, people were like, this stuff tastes like cardboard, you know, but I guess it's safe and it's free from gluten. We had that same issue truly in the food allergy world. And I think your background at Coca-Cola lent itself so strongly to the development of the brand clearly. And I think it's important for people to hear that this isn't just a mom that happened to be in the kitchen baking and boom this happened. It's, you know, this is somebody who had an incredible corporate career, a lot of branding experience, a lot of product development experience and exposure that you could then draw from as you were developing these products. And I think one of the things that you've said to me that was particularly powerful is it's really time to, to have some fun with these brands. You know, there are enough of these families and millions of these families are going to have some fun with these brands. I'd love for you to talk about that. Sure. So uh, as you mentioned, like safety is paramount. But then after that, I wanted my daughter to be I wanted her to be fulfilled nutritionally and from a taste perspective, but then I started to think about the emotional component and, and really what Martha had said about how so many of her fond childhood memories, whether it was play dates or birthday parties or holiday celebrations, were all going to involve food. And when you can't partake, pun intended, because of your dietary restrictions, it really weighs on you. I, I think it creates a lot of anxiety and feelings of isolation and lower self-esteem all around food, which is something I think should bring people together. And while I was thankful for the safe solutions that existed, I wasn't satisfied with them because I pictured my daughter growing up feeling self-conscious about her food allergies and then feeling self-conscious about pulling out a snack from a brand that her friends hadn't heard of and you know so many kids just want to be included and to feel normal and so I wanted to create a brand 
that I felt good about as a mom, but that I also thought that my child would feel good about and really be able to share with confidence among her friends. So then let's go from there. So there's a big difference between a mom in her kitchen fighting to protect the life of her child who wants to create something to the execution of this thing. And I think watching you execute on this thing has been extraordinary for so many reasons. And I think it's really, really important to highlight, highlight that venture capital funding is really tough to come by. If you're a woman, only 2% of venture capital funding goes to women. Only 1% of venture capital funding goes to people of color. And I think, you know, what you have been able to accomplish as both woman and woman of color is extraordinary. Um, not surprising because you're brilliant and fun and clearly bring an incredible expertise to this. But I really want you to kind of dive into that a little bit because that systemic problem um, is holding back a lot of creativity and innovation. And I think access to capital, capital is the most important ingredient in any product. And when people don't have access to that capital, it's, it's very restrictive and it holds, it holds people back. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is we have a very kind of homogenous product offering because we haven't tapped into this collective wisdom we haven't tapped in into this incredible diversity. So I would love for you to speak to that and the experience that you've gone through as an entrepreneur. Sure, so I knew how dismal the statistics were when we launched around funding. So I knew that we needed to keep it small and baby step because we were gonna need to have a lot of proof points to be able to raise capital. And so I left my career at Coca-Cola August 1st, 2017. I had a storage unit full of cookies where I live in Jersey City. And I literally filled up the back of my SUV and had a list of 50 stores across Brooklyn and the city in New Jersey that I would just literally go door to door, sell the products into, demo night after night after night. And I figured if that worked, then maybe we could move on to the next baby step. But to even get to that step, like thankfully I had a fairly successful corporate career as did my husband. And so we were able to pour a lot of our savings into to the business, which I don't think oftentimes a lot of women or people of color have the initial capital even to even get started. Um, so we were able to do that. And then we just went to the next baby step. So that took about a year of me just selling out of my car for, for almost a year. And then the summer of 2018, we got our first big break, which was getting into one region of Whole Foods into getting into getting into Wegmans. And we were so lean. I was the only full-time employee at Partake until January, 2020. And even that, like even running such a lean operation still cost a lot of money to the point where, you know, I was dipping Paris, perilously low into our savings and like tapping into my 401k. And thankfully we raised some friends and family capital the summer of 2018, which allowed us to get to that next proof point and say, like, I think we're on to something. Our velocity is strong. People are believing in the brand and they're coming back and buying the products again and again. And then we were able to raise a seed round that was led by Jay-Z's Marcy Venture Partners um, in the summer of 2019, which really allowed us to begin hiring and to begin to scale the business in a, in a new way. And again, listening to you, I think I just hear the tenacity, the ambition, the drive. And, you know, underneath all of that, for anybody that's listening, it's clear, especially to me, is love. It's like, this has to happen for the health of my child. This has to happen for the safety of families. And to realize the work you're doing is in service, not only to your own family, but to millions of families around the country who are struggling with this. And I think one of the issues that keeps coming up is affordability and accessibility. We hear from different people, you know, families on WIC, they don't have access to free from food. Families showing up at food banks, they don't have access to free from food. And you guys just announced a big partnership with Target. And I think, you know, that was such a game changer, even in the middle of COVID, that's just such an incredible game changer. Um, I would love if you could share a little bit about that and also how you've been managing all of this through COVID. Sure thing. So Target, that relationship began, we met the Target supplier diversity team in the bathroom line of Expo West in 2017. So that relationship has been nurtured and nurtured and they've been fantastic partners and, and supporters of our brand. So we were so proud to be able to launch into their stores nationally in May. And I actually thought the partnership you were going to mention was we also partnered in June with the Food Equality Initiative and they provide um, allergy friendly foods to food and secure family. So I'm also really excited about that partnership because you know, as much as we try to make our products accessible as a small company, like we just haven't reached the scale to be able to get to the price points that I wanna be able to get to so every person can afford our products. And so the way that we're trying to be make them more accessible is to partner with organizations like Food Equality Initiative and Blessings in a Backpack that are supporting and getting healthy foods into the mouths of food insecure families. 
For those that don't know, Food Equality Initiative was started by a remarkable mother, Emily Brown. Um, her vision, what she has been able to figure out with the logistics, really invite you to, to visit their website, Food Equality Initiative, to understand more what they're doing. And it makes so much sense that they would be partnering with you. And again, I think to the work that we're doing with Reef Plant is how do you make the economics of this work? Because in our country, a lot of people don't realize we subsidize five crops. Well, if you open your fridge or my fridge or look in any kitchen in the United States, we're eating more than five crops. And so our tax dollars are subsidizing only these five things. So if you're outside of those five things, the economics start to change and get a lot harder. And so for a company like Partake Foods, the economics of the supply chain are harder until this becomes more affordable and more accessible. What's great is that a lot of farmers, unfortunately, for better or worse, as we've talked about, food allergies don't care where you live. They don't care if you're a farmer in Iowa. They don't care if you're a mom in Texas or somebody out in California. They don't care. So this condition and this epidemic is hitting a lot of families. And, you know, I would love we've shared you know, thoughts on this, how we can end this in one generation, because the very thing that you're doing that's helping so many you know, comes out of a diagnosis that's really actually pretty scary. Mm -hmm. So I would love, you know, as you kind of shared recently, what are the next steps? Where are you guys going with this? Sure, so as much as I would love to think that people could just live off of cookies, I know that's not possible. And so my dream for Partake is to you know, be on every aisle of your grocery store. Our, our brand promise is that we're always going to make products that taste good, that are made with ingredients you can feel good about giving your family and are, are top eight allergen free and made in a top eight allergen free facility. And so our goal is just to continue to grow our distribution so that we can share our products with more people, hopefully grow our impact by partnering with organizations like the Food Equality Initiative and then grow our product offering as well. And I think, you know, clearly all of that requires capital. One of the recent announcements for the team was Goldman Sachs has just introduced an initiative and you guys are part of that. And I would love it if you could share a little bit more there too. Sure, that has been a dream partnership. So many things have happened so serendipitously for us. I couldn't be more grateful for the, the journey that we've been on. Um, Goldman Sachs has a launch with GS program and they have, there's a capital commitment. They uh, they committed about a half billion dollars of capital to women and people of color led companies. And then this year they announced a cohort of black and Latinx founded companies. So there's 14 companies across many different verticals and Goldman has just opened up their network and their internal resources to really tailor the program to exactly what every company needs. And we've only been in the midst of it about three or four weeks now. And I feel like it's already made a world of difference. It's just accelerated so many things. The knowledge and data and analytics and insights they have have just been like, I feel like I'm back in my Coke days where there's like a lot of resources and people to help us disseminate information so that we can make better decisions. And so, so thankful for the Goldman partnership. I know, and I think, you know, it's remarkable to see the leadership that's emerging out of Goldman Sachs. And again, you know, there are a lot of people that would hammer on that brand for a long time. Um, I had the honor of being part of the team as, as they were taking the company public, we were investors in that IPO and Hank Paulson came into the office. And so, you know, to have watched that brand evolve over the years, um, it's been through some pretty ugly stages and now it's in a place where it's developing platforms like this. They've recently said they're not going to take a, pub a company public unless there's diversity on the board, which is again, really forward thinking and just smart business because the economics show that those companies are going to outperform. So I love the fact that as a brand, they're making this investment. And one of the questions I asked you was, you know, are they taking an equity position in these companies as they work with you guys? And you said, no, right? Is that right? No, they're just helping us, which is like incredible. Um, no, no equity position, no strings attached. It's just resources and pure mentorship from the other companies. It's been a phenomenal experience. I also think, you know, from having worked with analysts on those teams, this space is an emerging space is one that people are not that familiar with. So, you know, what are they getting out of it? They're getting exposure to an entrepreneur like you that can actually teach them and inform them about what this industry is going to look like. And I think, you know, what we know for sure is that the 20th century food system that we all inherited doesn't work for 21st century families, not at the rates of conditions like asthma and allergies and diabetes and pediatric cancers. Unfortunately, they, they're too many too fast. And so it's forcing so many of us to really rethink this food system from farm all the way to shelf. Um, as you move forward, you know, to listen to you from being one employee to how many are on the team now? We're still a pretty lean, mean team. There's three of us full time and three part time. So our family of six and we're hoping to, to grow the team a bit this year. 
And so, you know, if you want to share a little bit, you know, by the end of the year, by the end of next year, where do you hope to be? So by the end of this year, we should be in over 3,000 stores. And to put that in perspective, we finished last year in about 350. So about 10x the number of stores that we were in. We plan to launch a seasonal offering this year, a yummy pumpkin spice cookie, um, a new product that we're launching on our e-com in uh, the fall of this year. And then by next year, we hope to do the same thing, to continue to grow distribution so that you can find us across the country and to continue to add products to our portfolio. So I think as you know, we think back on our own childhood and the brands that were in our cupboards, you know, from Campbell's to Kraft to General Mills products. I really do think, you know, 20, 50 years from now, our grandchildren will be looking back and talking about these new brands like Partake. They will be the household names. And I truly hope that is the case for you. I believe it will be the case. And I believe that we are pioneering a space in industry. I have to give thanks to guys like Joel Wardy from Enjoy Life Food because I think about the fact that some of those earlier brands really sort of built out the shelf. And as they built out the shelf, then there was a place for Partake to suddenly land. Um, so we all stand on each other's shoulders as we move this thing forward. Um, but I do believe that for these, for these sort of older brands, unless they truly begin to understand this free from space, and as you speak to sort of the need for a manufacturing facility that is absolutely dedicated um, to really think about building that into the business model so that we can continue to build this industry out. It's critical. And I would love it if you could share, you know, as you guys have come through that, what have been some of the biggest challenges? You know, I think for us, the two biggest challenges were, where were we going to make the product? Because as you mentioned, the, the free from facilities, there's not that many in the country. And I feel like as a food allergy parent, that's table stakes. Like what's the point of making a free from company if you're not going to make the product in a free from facility? Um, and so there's a very limited selection of those and their willingness to work with very early stage startups that may not have a ton of institutional funding. It, it, the appetite is small. So finding a partner that we believed in that also believed in us was a big challenge. And then I think the fundraising part, and I, I think and everything ended up working out just fine and, and I couldn't have dreamed of better partners but there were definitely some rocky points in there where I was like I believe in this business and I'm not going to quit but it's also really expensive and the capital is running really low. You know I think also really well-intended people come into the food industry thinking everybody eats you know how hard can this be and the complexity of the model and the system is really hard. Um, you know as we've seen through COVID there are a lot of middlemen and how can we eliminate some of those middlemen so that the farmers, the entrepreneurs have higher margins, stand a better chance of financial resiliency and ultimately success. And as I listen to you talk about this e-commerce platform, we're hearing that across the board, you know, from ranchers in Georgia to farmers in Montana, that direct to consumer access. And it's gonna be really interesting to see post pandemic what sticks when it comes to that. So where can people find you? How can they access Partake Foods? And for those that are listening, maybe that would love to work with you, how can they find you? Sure thing. So you can find Partake Foods across all the social media channels, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, at Partake Foods. You can find me on Instagram at DG Woodard, and you can reach us at info at partakefoods.com. Literally, I have the emails coming to my phone, so I'm checking everything that's coming in. So if you'd like to learn more or you have any questions at all, feel free to, to reach out to me there. And to find our cookies, you can find them at Whole Foods and Sprouts and Target and Fresh Market across the country. And Denise, I mean, as I listen to you, clearly you're just getting started. And I'm not going to put you on the spot, like, what's the next thing beyond cookies, you know, because that's probably like secret in the back. But yeah, you know, I think about your children watching what you're doing. And I love that aspect of your work. And, you know, I, 10, 20 years from now, what do you think they'll say about their mom? It's so interesting. So I, my daughter's five now and how the work that she's seen really has like ignited this work that she's seen us put into partake has ignited an entrepreneurial spirit and like a can do attitude in her. I'm so proud of my husband had on didn't have pajamas because he's really tall and she, she was like why doesn't daddy have pajamas like us and I was like well it's really hard to find pajamas for tall people and she was like we need to start a company do you think you can get my company on tv like how are we going to do this <laughs> and I was like that's what I want to see no wallowing in your sorrows like pick yourself up by your bootstraps and like do something about it and so I'm hoping that she sees that but she also sees all the hard work and all the weekend trade shows and all the things that go into building a successful business.
Exactly, the reality behind it, that it doesn't happen overnight. And it's a lot of love and a lot of hard work and a ton of passion and tenacity. Um, we're really excited. I can't wait to see where this continues to take you. Thank you so much for making the time today. And always, we just wish you the absolute best of luck. Of course, thank you so much, Robin. I appreciate it. Thanks.